Okay, boys and girls, this is a test, and this is a test to see if our virtual microscope works. So, let's see if we could blow up our piece of liver here. Here we go, blowing it up and moving it around and blowing it up and blowing it up to the max as a test and then blowing it back down step by step. Okay, this uh, lecture is called Histology of the Liver. There's a little piece of liver that you just cut out of your body, of your cadaver's body. Here we are making it a little bit bigger. Here we are looking at it with the magnifying glass up close and I think you will kind of recall hopefully that when you took your liver out of your body and you made a slice you basically saw kind of a boring pattern with little holes and all those holes are nothing but veins they're not arteries and if the big veins were near areas that had a little green exuding from them, that was probably a portal vein. If some of these big veins looks like they were all by themselves with no green goo coming from them, those were probably uh, hepatic veins. Generally the hepatic veins are a little bit bigger. But whenever you have something like this, as demonstrated by the arrow, that has a lot of connective tissue around it and maybe another structure, that's more likely to be a portal vein. Otherwise, it's just a guessing game. So take a very, very good look at this cut surface of a liver. Look at it up close, because right now we're going to jump from gross to microscopic. And that's basically the same thing we're looking at. And once again, the big holes that have connective tissue around them, like this one, are much more likely to be portal veins because they're part of portal triads. Because you can see an artery here, you can see a bile duct here, and you can see the big vein here. And here's another portal triad because you could see all three. But if you see something that basically doesn't have much connective tissue and looks big, and you look at it and it's really only a vein, then that's more likely to be a hepatic vein. But once again, if you take a look and there's a little bile duct in the corner somewhere, then I would like to change my theory and probably call it a portal vein. In addition, notice that the lobules of the liver, there's a lobule, there's a lobule, there's a lobule, there's a lobule. You can actually see lobules on the liver if you look very, very closely at the gross specimen. There's a lobule. They're really kind of hard to delineate because they don't really have any connective tissue separating them. The only connective tissue that you see in a liver is uh, in a portal area or uh, perhaps as part of a blood vessel somewhere. Otherwise, the vast majority of the liver are lobules in which there is no connective tissue. Now, the only two kinds of cells that there are in the liver are hepatocytes and cup for cells. And if you see these little sinusoidal lines converging generally towards an area, most likely this area is going to be a central vein. And the central vein is continuous with the drainage from the sinusoids. And about 90% of all the cells that you see in this field are hepatocytes. They're all nice and round. They're quite variable in density of staining. They generally have nucleoli. But the cells that are not hepatocytes and are a little more spindly, like here, and possibly here, and possibly here, and probably here, and definitely here, and definitely here, those are the Kupfer cells, part of the reticuloendothelial system. You could call them macrophages or histiocytes because that what, that's what they do. And the nice thing about the liver is that if you take away the portal areas and the big blood vessels, 
there's only two kinds of cells. The round ones are the hepatocytes, and the spindly ones are the cupfer cells. And there is no connective tissue around a central vein, but there is a lot of connective tissue around a portal vein. And not only is there a lot of connective tissue around a portal vein, but there's also a hepatic artery, technically, and a bile duct as well. Now this happens to be a large area. There's a smooth muscle of a portal vein. That's probably a little bile duct branch. Here's some more veins. But let's get a regular portal vein. See, there's a central vein, and the sinusoids are generally converging towards it. And here's some more sinusoids and hepatocytes and cup for cells. Those are the only three things you see in here. And now we have something as we cruise along down the line. That looks like it could very well be another central vein. But if you see a vein, oh, and here in this case a large vein again, that's near a portal or a, a columnar line structure, that's a bile duct, and of course here's a hepatic artery. These are your three features of a hepatic uh, triad. Except it's a big one, isn't it? Because there's a big bile duct, and there's a big artery, and there's a big vein. Oh, I'm sorry, here's the big vein. So let's cruise on through the liver, and voila, we see a big lumen thin wall structure, which is the portal vein. We can see a bile duct, and probably this thing at the bottom is part of hepatic artery. Don't be depressed if you only see one or two of the three things you're supposed to see in the portal triad because in the real world you never see all three and you're more likely to see a couple of bile ducts and no artery but you almost always see the vein and, uh, and remember there is always a little bit of connective tissue at least in the portal area of, or a portal triad and here's probably another portal triad but when you get to a central vein which you could find by following the convergence of sinusoids like well this isn't the central vein is not because it has some connective tissue but it looks like the sinusoids are kind of converging this way so let's see nope that was the end of a slide in fact that's the end of the show <laughs>